Salut les internautes, je suis aux états unis dans l'état du Montana. Ça c'est Big Mike, un T-Rex. Et ça, c'est le musée des Rockies, où je suis venu rencontrer Jack Horner, l'homme qui veut faire renaître les dinosaures. Uh, in which extent this discovery can change the knowledge about dinosaurs? Um, the discovery of B-Rex was, you know, pretty amazing. I mean, we... When we, uh, when we get a dinosaur, we break it open and look inside, often. And, and what Mary Schweitzer did was take a piece of bone, but then put it in acid and etch away all of the mineral. And no one had ever done that before, because everyone had assumed that if you did that, there wouldn't be anything left. And when she did that, she ended up with soft tissues. Um, blood vessels and I mean it was just amazing it was it was incredible because no one ever expected that but inside those vessels were what looked like blood cells or at least the remnants of it and she was then able to extract that material and analyze it and it was heme which is the foundation of hemoglobin mm -hmm. so we had always thought that when something fossilized there wasn't anything left. Mm -hmm. there, was, there, would, there couldn't possibly be any soft tissues left. Mm -hmm. But now we know that there's blood vessels, there's cells, there's um, proteins. We've not found DNA. We can hope that it would be the next step. Well, we would hope so, although I don't know, I don't know that DNA will help us. Um, unfortunately, DNA is a huge molecule. It's got you know, a trillion parts, and it breaks, we know it breaks down very quickly. And we know that because you know, we, we have uh, a Neanderthal in ice, and we have a mammoth elephant found in ice, and even their DNA is broken down quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So we think if we do find DNA, it's going to be just a minuscule part, maybe maybe 50 or 100 parts, which is tiny compared to the tree, three trillion. So I don't know if we'll be able to do anything with it. So I think, I think more importantly would be to get more proteins. What for? Well, you know, we've, we've got collagen proteins mm -hmm. and keratin protein. Mm -hmm. uh, and those tell us that, that dinosaurs are related to birds as well. Okay. A link to the project uh, Chickenosaurus. The Chickenosaurus project, yes. Yeah. Why chicken and not ostrich, for instance? Chickens are just easier to come by. I mean, everybody eats chickens. Uh -huh. Buy a chicken, it's, it's cheap. Mm -hmm. An ostrich is expensive. Okay. And so, once you have the method, so once you know how to make a Chickenosaurus, you can then use the same methodology to make an ostrichosaurus. But you don't want to start with the ostrich because it's too expensive. So. Yeah, and perhaps it's too tall. No. Too tall. That's right. You know, you know, you should make. You know, if you're going to make dinosaurs that might eat you, you should make them little. Um, the 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 purpose is to activate some genes, which exist in the DNA of chicken. Well, the chicken is developing. It actually has a tail for a while. Mm -hmm. All embryos do. But then a gene turns on and resorbs that tail, gets rid of it. Mm -hmm. So if we could stop that from happening, if we could stop that gene from turning on, mm -hmm. it would hatch out with a tail. Mm -hmm. As the wing is developing, the hand actually has three fingers. And then those three fingers fuse together to make the wing. Mm -hmm. So we're looking for the gene that fuses those together to stop that from happening. Do you already know which genes? No, we don't. We're, we're searching for those. Is it the issue? That's the issue, yes. Okay. Yeah, we're, that's the problem. We just haven't found them. But, but we're finding genes that do certain things at a pretty fast rate. So I suspect we'll find them in the next couple of years. When the chicken of the loose will be uh, sneaking around? I have no doubt that we'll have it in at least five years. It's fun to imagine that the chicken of the loose will exist one day. But what for? Well, that's a good question, and it's, it's about a lot of things. First off, 
if an, you know, we spent, I, I'm an evolutionary biologist, I'm a paleontologist, I'm an evolutionary biologist, and I try to teach evolution. And a lot of people, you know, are skeptical about evolution. But if an animal has ancestral traits and you can turn them on, you're demonstrating evolution. And so for educational purposes, it's pretty important mm -hmm. because, because you couldn't, if evolution didn't work, you couldn't do this. Mm -hmm. But another reason is just it, it gives us some ideas of, you know, if once we learn how to turn genes on and turn them off, there may be a lot of medical applications as well. Yes. So, so you know, there, there's no downside to it. There's no, you know, it, so, it sounds fun, and it is kind of a fun way to learn how to do this stuff, but it may be very practical as well. Okay. Thank you, Jack. You're welcome. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Okay.